Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Monday episode of Star Wars Lads. My name is Liam, and today we're going to be talking about Star Wars book collecting. Yes, how to collect Star Wars books. So I don't know about a lot of you, and I'm sure most of you out there are collectors, but for me, collecting has always been synonymous with Star Wars, and it started with for me with toys, really, and, and continued on into comic books and books and other memorabilia and all this other stuff. But Star Wars, the merchandising aspect of Star Wars, George Lucas really had a foresight there that was built on his impression of Disney and Disneyland. And it really turned into a, a massive, a massive thing. And Star Wars books, to me, are one of my favorite things to collect. And as you can see in the background on every single video that we do, I have a bunch of Star Wars books back here. And I wanted to talk about how to get into Star Wars book collecting. So we're going to talk about in this video, basically, give you a brief history of Star Wars books what types of formats there are out there. We're specifically going to be looking at hardcovers, paperback, first prints, science fiction, book club, hardcovers, and paperback only Star Wars books. This video is also going to be focused on the Star Wars adult books because there are so many Star Wars junior novels and middle grade books that I really kind of wanted to focus on the adult books in this video because I think that deserves another video all its own. Otherwise, this one might be like 45 minutes long. So I think I'm going to split it up into two parts, but this one focusing on the adult side and those ones focusing on the younger reader side of the Star Wars books because there are a lot out there for, to collect for that. So we're going to dive into all the different formats here. But before we get started, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel for Star Wars content minimum three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you haven't checked out our, all our videos last week, check those out. We also started a Star Wars Legends book club on Friday. If you're interested, we started it with Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison, a, a review on that as a comic. We will be diving into Splinter of the Mind's Eye next month. So if you want to read that and read along with us, in April, we'll be talking about Splinter of the Mind's Eye and giving you guys a full review of that. So now let's get into the video. So to start out, let's look back at the history of Star Wars books. And this will be brief, don't worry. Uh, Star Wars books have always gone hand in hand with Star Wars. In fact, due to a greater demand for science fiction and fantasy stories with readers than there was with film goers in the mid 70s, George Lucas's shooting script for Star Wars titled The Adventures of Luke Starkiller as taken from the journal of the Wills Saga 1, The Star Wars was adapted into a novel by Alan Dean Foster and was released as a paperback titled Star Wars from the Adventures of Luke Skywalker in November of 1976 six months before the film was released in theaters. Since its release, Star Wars books have consistently been released in one of three primary collectible formats, hardcovers, paperbacks, and science fiction book club hardcovers. Okay, so let's start by looking at the standard sized hardcover format. It's the most common format for most collectors out there, and usually most Star Wars books are released in this format first. Most novels released by major publishers nowadays get their very first print run in hardcover before being followed up six months or a year later with a paperback release. While Star Wars books didn't start following this format until the 90s when the Bantam book era of Star Wars began with Heir to the Empire, Star Wars books have predominantly continued the hardcover first release strategy ever since through the end of Legends and into the canon era. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the first Star Wars novel ever published was Star Wars from the Adventures of Luke Skywalker, and it got its first printing in paperback. Paperback first printings and sometimes paperback exclusive releases still remained a part of the Star Wars novel format release strategy until the beginning of canon in 2014. These paperback first prints were the main Star Wars book format in the early early, more sporadic days of Star Wars publishing from 1976 to 1983. They did, however, continue into the 90s with many different series like the Jedi Academy trilogy, the Corellian trilogy, the Black Fleet Crisis, the Han Solo trilogy, Star Wars Tales, and the Bounty Hunter Wars, all with the individual books in each series being released first in paperback format. Star Wars paperback first prints were also employed as part of Del Rey's massive multi-book publishing initiatives such as The New Jedi Order and Legacy of the Force. The 19-book series, The New Jedi Order, adopted the strategy of releasing one standard hardcover every year during its four-year run from 1999 to 2003, and then filling in the remaining time between hardcover releases with paperback first releases. So after Vector Prime, the first standard hardcover was released in 1999, it was followed up with the Dark Tide duology and the Agents of Chaos duology before the next hardcover, Balance Point, was released, and so on. First release paperbacks did continue into the 2000s and were employed similarly to how they were in the 90s. Series like the Republic Commando series, the MedStar duology, the Coruscant Knights trilogy, and the Dark Nest trilogy were all first released as paperbacks. 
Like the New Jedi Order, the second Star Wars publishing initiative, Legacy of the Force, also employed the one hardcover release a year strategy for Legacy of the Force Betrayal, Sacrifice, and Invincible, and released Legacy of the Force Bloodlines, Tempest, Exile, Inferno, Fury, and Revelation in paperback. It's also worth noting that the final Legends publishing initiative, Fate of the Jedi, did not employ this strategy where all of its books were released first in hardcover format. The Science Fiction Book Club, or the SFBC, is a monthly book subscription membership where members can use their monthly credits to redeem books of their choice from the club's catalog. SFBC hardcovers were printed in a relatively cheaper format than standard hardcovers with thinner paper and more compact design. In fact, the best way to tell if a hardcover is SFBC printed or printed by the original publisher is its height. Standard hardcovers are about nine and a half inches tall, whilst SFBC hardcovers are closer to the height of modern YA novels coming in around eight and a half inches tall. So if SFBC hardcovers were made more cheaply and are more compressed than other hardcovers, why collect them at all? Well, since 1977 and up until the early days of canon, the Star Wars franchise allowed nearly every book they published to be reprinted as an SFBC hardcover, including those that were originally published in paperback only. Remember in the previous section where I kept referencing that certain books were first printed or first released in paperback format? That is because all of those books I mentioned were eventually given exclusive science fiction book club hardcovers. The SFBC usually reprinted these stories as either a hardcover version of one original paperback or a larger collected edition that contained anywhere from two to three books all in one. So hopefully this helps you out. I've compiled here a list of every single Star Wars book that you can only get in hardcover from the science fiction book club hardcovers. So sometimes it's in formats like MedStar, which is a combination of two books. Sometimes it's in a format like this New Jedi Order Trader book, which is just one single paperback that was published in hardcover. So here we have every science fiction book club exclusive hardcover, starting with the first Star Wars book ever, Star Wars, from the Adventures of Luke Skywalker. Then we get into Splinter of the Mind's Eye, the Han Solo Adventures trilogy, which were each published by themselves. So Han Solo at Star's End, Han Solo's Revenge, and Han Solo and the Lost Legacy, the Empire Strikes Back novelization, the Return of the Jedi novelization, Lando Calrissian Adventures, only two of which were published in science fiction book club exclusive hardcovers. Those were the first two, Lando Calrissian and the Mind Harp of Sheru, and Lando Calrissian and the Flame Wind of Ocean. Then we get our first compilation book in the 90s. We got a lot of these in the 90s. This starts with the Jedi Academy trilogy, then goes into the Corellian trilogy, the Black Fleet Crisis, Han Solo trilogy, Star Wars Tales, which collects tales from the Mos Eisley Cantina, tales of the Bounty Hunters, and tales from Jabba's Palace. Then we have the Bounty Hunter Wars. Then we get into our new Jedi Order collections, which starts with the Dark Tide duology. Agents of Chaos is next, and then Edge of Victory. Then we have our first single novel that was published by itself in the new Jedi Order, Dark Journey. Then we have another duology, Enemy Lines. Then we have another single, Traitor. This is a trilogy, Force Heretic, which is a hard one to find. Then the final prophecy. Then we get into MedStar duology, which I showed you earlier. Yoda Dark Rendezvous, the Dark Ness trilogy. Then we have the four Republic Commando books, which were each published in sets of two. So we have Republic Commando Volume 1 and Republic Commando Volume 2. Then we get into the Legacy of the Force collection, which six of the nine were published in only science fiction book club hardcover and those were Bloodlines, Tempest, Exile, Inferno, Fury, and Revelation. Finally, the final four books that were only published in the science fiction book club hardcovers, Star Wars Coruscant Knights, which is a trilogy that was collected in one book, Star Wars Shadow Games, Scourge, and The Last Jedi, which has nothing to do with the actual film The Last Jedi. Mostly every book that was released in a standard size hardcover was also released in SFBC hardcovers, so if you want to go for that a complete set of SFBC hardcovers, you can go for that and it really doesn't cost you too much more money. Personally, I prefer the standard size hardcovers because I just think they look a little nicer, they're a little higher quality, and I don't mind the size differential on my shelves, but some people do, and so some people do go for a complete set of SFBC hardcovers. Let me know in the comments below if you're one of those people because I think that's a really cool idea and a really cool collection to have on your shelf because it would look really nice if they're all right next to each other like that. Finally, we're going to talk about paperback exclusive novels. So these were the Star Wars novels that were released in paperback and then never got published in science fiction book club collections or their own hardcovers and never got a standard size hardcover either. The first of these was Lando Calrissian in the Star Cave of Thon Baca, which was the final book of the Lando Calrissian Adventures trilogy. 
Next is a series that I've always been shocked never got a couple of SFBC hardcover collections because it's one of the most beloved and acclaimed Star Wars book series of all time, and that's Michael Stackpole and later Aaron Alston's X-Wing series. The X-Wing series features 10 books, 9 of which are paperback exclusive. The paperback exclusive X-Wing books are X-Wing Rogue Squadron, X-Wing Wedge's Gamble, X-Wing The Krydos Trap, X-Wing The Back to War, X-Wing Wraith Squadron, X-Wing Iron Fist, X-Wing Solo Command, X-Wing Isard's Revenge, and X-Wing Starfighters of Adumar. Another couple strange anomalies when it comes to paperback exclusive releases are Tales from the New Republic, Tales from the Empire, and Imperial Commando 501st. These novels were all part of paperback series that later got collected into SFBC hardcovers, but for some reason these three never got printed in hardcover format. In regards to Tales from the New Republic and Tales from the Empire, this is most likely because these two books came out a few years later than the other books in the series were released when they were collected. When it comes to Imperial Commando 501st, I can only assume there were plans to collect it and its sequels into an SFBC hardcover like was done with the Republic Commando books, but when subsequent books in the series were cancelled, this book was left all alone. Galaxies, The Ruins of Dantooine, Lost Tribes of the Sith, The Collected Stories, Cross Current, and Riptide are the other paperback exclusive novels, the first one being a tie-in to the Galaxies video game, and the final three being released later in the Legends life cycle when Star Wars books were waning in popularity. And those who were still reading Star Wars books were mostly focused on the Fate of the Jedi initiative that was still dominating the Star Star Wars publishing landscape at the time. All right, now we're going to get into the really juicy stuff. Now we're going to talk about building your Star Wars book collection. So we talked about all the formats. We talked about hardcovers, paperbacks, science fiction book club hardcovers, and those books that are only available in paperback and in no other format. Now it's time for us to talk about how you can collect those, pricing, where you can get these books, how you can build up your collection. This is the most exciting part. So here we go. So the first place to start, and I think it's kind of obvious, but I think I'll say it anyways, because it really is the basis of your entire collection is you have to identify what you want to collect. So talking earlier about all the different formats, there's obviously multiple ways you can go with your collection. For me, I'm somebody who prefers hardcovers over paperback, but will get the paperbacks if they were first printed in paperback or are exclusive in paperback. So I'm not just a pure hardcover collector. I do collect the paperbacks. I'm also somebody who prefers standard size hardcovers to the SFBC hardcovers, but obviously if a book is only available in SFBC hardcover, that's the one I want. So you personally have to identify which version of Star Wars books you want to collect. There's plenty of people out there who are paperback only collectors, and that's great because it really is the easiest way to just obtain every Star Wars story. If your goal is to just have every Star Wars story ever written on your shelf, then that is the best way to do it because that is both the most cost effective, it is the cheapest, and it is the most readily available because you can buy almost every Star Wars book that's ever been published in some format on Amazon or on Target or like any website where mass market paperbacks are sold, Barnes and Noble. They're constantly being reprinted and paperback is definitely the easiest way to get into it. If you're trying to get into standard size hardcover format, know that you won't be able to get everything in that format. You could also collect an entire SFBC library, as I talked about before, that would get you probably the closest to at least everything being in a uniform size in hardcover, but still you'd be missing a few things because there are some books that are only available in paperback. So you have to decide how and what you want to collect first. And you could be one of those people, which I kind of consider myself one that says, I want to collect everything. Well, that's great. You can collect everything but I think you have to decide where you want to start. And if your starting point is, I just want to read the books, paperback's probably the format you should go with. If you're someone like me who looks at things they buy as some type of actual physical investment every time I spend money, I prefer hardcovers because they don't lose their value as often. But for a lot of people, they don't even like to read in hardcover. And I can completely understand that too, because a lot of times if I'll find a paperback copy of something that I already have in hardcover and it's like, 50 cents, I'll pick it up because it is easier to read a paperback. I don't have to worry about it getting ruined as well. So uh, just pick which format you want, and that'll be the basis of the rest of your collection and how you spend your money and how you can budget towards what you want to buy in the future. So you've decided how and what format you want to collect. What's the next step? You got to buy the books. So now you have to put your money where your mouth is. You have to spend to actually get a collection. As you can see, I have a lot of Star Wars books behind me. You can usually see it in the tighter shot a little bit better, but this is a, a bit wider shot because it's me by myself today. But I have a lot of Star Wars books behind me. 
but I'm not somebody who really likes to spend a lot of money on my collections. For me, it's all about the thrill of the hunt. And I like to find things for much cheaper than they are actually valued at and slowly accumulate things over time. Now, that is not a strategy that works for everybody. A lot of people want immediate gratification, which if you're going for paper picks, you can get instantly. Or if you have a ton of money, you can go on eBay and drop it all on Star Wars hardcovers and more power to you. If you have the resources to do that, that's fantastic. Also, Facebook groups are a great way to find this stuff as well. You can find it in good condition from collectors who do care about it and have preserved it over the years. Usually though, if you're going on eBay or you're going on Facebook or into any type of collector's marketplace, you are going to play, pay market value, which will be significantly higher than if you go to, which I would recommend as the number one place to look for Star Wars books, your local used bookstores. Your local used bookstores will be good for basically any format. And I've found things from like rare science fiction book club hardcovers, like the New Jedi Order. I have almost every New Jedi Order hardcover that I found at a local bookstore just randomly sitting there. And I paid, you know, $10 a pop for them. So you can get them significantly cheaper than they are actually valued at. For me, it's all about the thrill of the hunt and and that's why I like to physically go into stores to find this stuff. You're supporting people in your local community. You're also just continuing the trend of if you're a book collector, I feel like in a book reader, you want to support the physical media that's out there and these people who are preserving that. For me, that's very important. And that's why I prefer to go to used bookstores. But obviously, the method of buying and how much you spend is completely up to you. But my personal recommendation would be to go to your local bookstores see what they have and constantly go once a month or once every couple of weeks and constantly check. And most of the time you'll be disappointed. Most of the time they won't have something because the amount of people who own SFBC Star Wars hardcovers are very few. And the likelihood that one of them is going to be living in your city and just decide to donate it to your local bookstore is going to be a very slim chance. But I've had enough success doing that to where I would say, Go for it. So finally, before we wrap this video up, I want to talk about market value for some of these books, because if you're new to Star Wars collecting, you might know not know what some of these books go for. Some of these books go for absurd prices. And I think knowing the market values of these books would be very helpful if I was starting my collection for trying to decide which formats to go with and even Let's say you want to collect New Jedi Order, but you don't want to pay a lot for some of the SFBC hardcovers. Maybe you collect all of New Jedi Order in paperback so it looks nice on your shelf all as one format. But you collect other books and hardcover that you can complete. This kind of higher price guide will help you budget which series and which books you want to focus your money on, especially if you're just diving in. With that being said, nearly every Star Wars book has been reprinted in mass market paperbacks countless times. So even books that are paperback exclusive aren't necessarily worth that much. One of the biggest distinguishing factors between paperback collectors, though, is the original printings versus the Legends banner printings. As you can see here, Star Wars Legends mass market paperbacks printed after 2014 canon distinction were given a banner on the cover and spine that mark it as legends whereas those same mass market paperbacks printed prior to 2014 have no banner since the legends banner paperbacks are still being printed that makes the non-legends banner paperbacks a bit more sought after in the collector communities still though you rarely see a star wars paperback going for an exorbitant price biggest exceptions to this rule would be the first star wars paperback star wars from the adventures of luke skywalker if you got the first print of that that goes for a significant amount of money. And the other exception would be the Lando Calrissian and the Star Cave of Thonbaka, which was the only book in both the Han Solo Adventures and Lando Calrissian Adventures trilogies that didn't get an SFBC hardcover. A first print of this book usually goes for around $20, but can get up to the $60 range if it's in mint condition. Moving on to hardcovers, we should probably start by looking at SFBC hardcovers. When it comes to books that were printed in both standard and SFBC hardcover, there are rarely major price discrepancies between either copy. So it's not really more valuable to have an SFBC copy of the Crystal Star instead of the standard hardcover. But if we take another look at this graphic that shows the SFBC exclusive hardcovers, these are obviously worth much more than their paperback counterparts. What might surprise you about the SFBC collector's market, however, is that most of the early Star Wars book collections from the 90s, like the Jedi Academy trilogy, all the way through Bounty Hunter Wars, into the couple of first new Jedi Order collections, really aren't worth as much as the 2000s and 2000s. 
2010s SFBC hardcovers. Sure, these books are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but you can get solid copies of these for anywhere between $20 to $60 on eBay. Interestingly enough, though, it's about halfway through the New Jedi Order initiative that the SFBC hardcovers became far more rare and valuable. This really begins with the first solo SFBC hardcover novel, The New Jedi Order Dark Journey, which usually sells in the $60 to $100 range. The same value can mostly be applied to enemy lines and trader. But then the Force Heretic collection jumps upwards of $100 to $150 a copy, with a similar market for the last SFBC exclusive hardcover from the New Jedi Order, Final Prophecy. MedStar, Yoda Dark Rendezvous, and Dark Nest are next in the release window, and they come back down a bit towards the $40 to $80 average. But once again, the two Republic Commando volumes sell at a slightly higher price, ranging from the $60 to $100 range, with Volume 2 being much rarer than Volume 1. And that's about the last time you'll see the prices that low for the remaining SFBC exclusive hardcovers. All of the legacy of the Force SFBC exclusives stay in the $60 to $100 range of pop. Our final four books here, though, are what make the rest of them look like child's play. Due to the waning interest in Star Wars books during the late 2000s and early 2010s, SFBC hardcovers of less iconic Star Wars books like Coruscant Night, Shadow Game, Scourge, and The Last Jedi, no, not the film again, make it hard to even find listings of these books online. But currently, there is a listing of Coruscant Nights asking for $171.95 for the book. Okay, I guess that's not too bad, but I couldn't find any listings or sales for Scourge. So now we look at Shadow Games. Shadow Games sold for an offer under $235 which we don't know the exact price for that, but I would guess it's probably around the $200 range. That seems a bit excessive, right? Well, you haven't met The Last Jedi. I hope Brian Johnson was given a copy of this book as part of his payment for his work on the film because the original book that was released in 2013 and has absolutely nothing to do with the film of the same name just sold on eBay for $879 in February. Yeah. Let that sink in if you were on the fence about getting into Star Wars hardcover collecting. Have we recovered a bit from seeing the price of The Last Jedi in hardcover? I hope so, because I'm going to make your wallets cry a little bit more talking about some of these standard hardcovers. Most standard Star Wars hardcovers really aren't that expensive. You might get lucky and find them at your used bookstore for a couple of dollars. Or in the worst case scenario, you pay anywhere from $5 to $20 for the one you want on eBay. Well, as I've mentioned many times throughout this video, the late 2000s and early 2010s were a very down period for Star Wars book sales. And with the Disney acquisition of the franchise in 2012, many phenomenal Star Wars books were just being released without any real fanfare and then sent to clearance sections far quicker than usual because of Disney's canon relaunch. So books like The Clone Wars, Wild Space, The Clone Wars, No Prisoners, The Clone Wars, Gambit, Siege and Stealth, The Old Republic, Revan, Deceived in Annihilation, Razor's Edge, Darth Plagueis and Kenobi all sell for far more than the rest of Stan standard size hardcovers that are out there. The same trend could be applied to early canon novels, especially those released prior to The Force Awakens and its resurrection of the Star Wars hype across all mediums. The hardcovers of A New Dawn, Tarkin, Heir to the Jedi, Lords of the Sith, and Dark Disciple are all worth significantly more than the rest of Star Wars canon novels. Well, that's the video, so I hope you guys found that helpful. I hope you found that helpful if you're trying to figure out which format you want to get into Star Wars book collecting. If you're trying to figure out which Star Wars books fall in which format, because it is really confusing. And I really hope these graphics helped you out a lot, because I really wish I had something like that when I was getting into Star Wars book collecting. And I hope the price guide helped you decide which direction to go in, because the worst thing in the world would be you hoping to get a complete card cover collection only for you to be down to the last Jedi and be like, oh my God, it's $800 to get this book. <laughs> so now hopefully you know where you can proceed and where you can budget your money and your time into looking for certain books. So thank you so much for watching. I will do a complete overview of my Star Wars book collection in the future. Hopefully you guys want to see that. Comment below and let me know if you want to see it. I will also be looking to talk about the younger reader Star Wars books in the future because there are so many of them, like I said at the beginning, they kind of deserve their own videos. So we'll talk about that and comics as well in different types of videos. I want to do a lot more collecting type videos on here because I do collect basically all forms of Star Wars media and memorabilia. 
So if you have something Star Wars related in a collection that you would like to see me do next, let me know down below because I'm really looking forward to doing toys at some point as well as video games after I get into comics and all that type of stuff. So let me know down in the comments below what you would like to see next. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with fellow Star Wars collectors and let them know that they can find Star Wars collection stuff on Star Wars Lads, as well as reading guides. We have a full reading guide for the High Republic if you're interested in getting into that. We have a ton of Star Wars book stuff on our channel. So if you're interested in Star Wars books, Star Wars Lads is definitely the place for you to be. So thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.